My next guest is sticking with the tech trade. She had a front row seat to the first attempt at AI in the 90s and says this is different. She's urging investors to look for companies that use the tech in one very specific way. For more on this, let's bring in Kim Forrest, Chief Investment Officer at Boca Capital Partners. Kim, uh, welcome. So lay it out for us. It's, uh, it's hype, it's hoopla, but it's for real. So, yeah, and timing is everything, but we'll get to that. That is the uh, big question that people really need to answer is when and how do I invest? But let's lay out this problem. So for the past, mm, I don't know, maybe 25 years, AI has been rolling around, being developed in the background, but computers have gotten faster, data has become available, and techniques have become somewhat better, although they're pretty much what they were in the 80s and 90s, believe it or not. But computers are better and data is plentiful, which is what AI needs. Um, anyhow, so why am I so excited about AI? Well, I'm somebody that loves productivity because I like investing and I like my companies to get better and better. And that the way they do that is through um, giving technology into their employees' hands, making them more productive. AI has that promise embedded in it. And everybody playing around with chat GBT can really figure that out, right? Like, that's just one example. But here's the thing. It's always going to take longer than we think. Always. Like all technology. And hopefully investors won't give up on it before it really starts adding productivity to end uh, businesses. But I also take your point, which is, you know, as much as this is for real, the way that you will get excited about it as an investment thesis is when you see what? It delivering productivity? Yes, exactly. Or at least a relatively smooth, shorter path to productivity. So if somebody comes up with, I don't know, there's lots of examples of it, but companies deploying AI and their earnings going up because of it, that's productivity, right? That's what we all want. And I think that's closer than a lot of us think. And But it's not going to be in, like, super glamorous ways either. You know, we talk, him about the names that... I don't want to say that they're going to seem boring to people because they're anything but. And, you know, Intel, AMD, Micron, these are not... They're not boring. You know, some are outstanding to the upside, some are outstanding to the downside, but... You know, they're, it, it's not NVIDIA. It's not, I don't know, OpenAI. Obviously, you can't, you know, really invest directly in that right now. Right. Um, why these names, which you have been a longtime fan of? And, and what about Broadcom, for instance? Okay. So, well, Broadcom is the weirdest company ever, right? Because it has this uh, <laughs> old storage software, storage items. And now, now it's like the new AI darling because of one class of... Um, chips that it produces, so that's good. But all of these companies can and will play in the world of AI because we need storage for all the data that we collect. We need data to go through telcos because they're going to go from the real world to the server to get mixed around to become AI, to become an answer, and then out into the real world. So there's a lot of data that's going to be zipping around. And all of the companies that we talked about are going to have a, pl a hand in it, some more glamorous than others. Yeah, although I don't hear you saying you're filling your boots with Broadcom, but maybe, like you said, because it is such an odd animal. Let's just, one for one second, talk Intel, because it's been sure. completely left out of this whole conversation. It started to perk sure. up a little bit with these comments about maybe being a part. Yeah, you, got, you can explain it better than me. I mean, do you think sure. that there's something real there? And for people who are looking for maybe an unloved, low multiple way to now maybe find the next AI horse to bet on. Could Intel possibly be that? Well, Jensen Wang gave a little indication this year or this week whenever it said Intel's fab um, looks kind of interesting to him. Now, what you have to remember is this. A lot of the sexy chip companies like NVIDIA don't actually make the product. They design the product and hand it off to, well, maybe Tem uh, Taiwan Semi. So they don't want to have just one vendor. They want to have many vendors. And Intel wants to get into the fabricating or the fab, as we call it. Um, so it's good that they are finally coming up to speed. And if they can satisfy a picky customer like NVIDIA, they have a shot. They, being Intel, have a shot at getting some of the AI love 
because it will produce other people's chips. Is that why you own it, or you think that would just be a, you know, a sweetener? It's a sweetener. I think the other reason is, even though we love the high, um, the AI use chips, there is a lot of chips that are going to be used in getting that data here to there. And the other thing is, maybe Intel can come up um, and, and, you know, uh, come up into that AI game themselves. Because I'll tell you this, not everybody loves spending a whole lot of money for a semiconductor that like better performance for cheaper, which is why AMD is in the game as well. All right. Kim Forrest, you've been through it all. Uh, the, you know, no one better to put this in perspective and help us sort it out. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Kim Forrest with Boca Capital Partners.